I will present the results of my project, uh, which is in the, at the Linz, hosted at the Linz Institute of Technology. The project is called Control Software for Reliable Quantum Computers. And actually, I will try to explain what shoeboxes have to do with quantum computers, what's the relation between shoeboxes, and how I'm using them for computing. So I will start with an analogy instead of an introduction. Then I will move to the state of the art, which is the software which I'm developing in the project. And then I will formulate some future work, which means using different techniques to advance the field of control software. So what does it mean? I will start with this analogy, and you can imagine that you have a problem. The problem is you have a stack of books, and you need to learn it. You have, for example, a an exam within one week. And you have two constraints. The first constraint is that you have limited time this week. You organize your days along an axis, a time axis, the green arrow. Monday, Tuesday until Sunday. Next Monday is the exam. So this is your first constraint. The second constraint is that your brain is limited. You have limited capacity of learning. This means that you will learn one chapter a day each day one chapter. So you can approximate everything in a shoebox. So the cuboid, limited time times limited capacity, is the result of your learning. It's your shoebox. So you have like resources for learning approximated by this. And the question is, how do you use this shoebox with a quantum computer? But first of all, what are quantum computers and why are they useful? Um, in the 90s, people were... So, the first quantum algorithm was very trivial in a way. It showed that quantum computers can be more powerful. Then in the 90s, they said, okay, a quantum computer could factorize integers. It could break RSA. Nowadays, people are not interested in that. They are interested in new materials, discovering drugs, discovering how things can be optimized. So then the, 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 the most probable application in, with an industrial relevance will be quantum chemistry. So people want to execute a quantum algorithm which represents a quantum chemistry process on a quantum computer. On the left, here, on the left, you see something that is more or less the quantum computer. So this means that there has to be a classical software piece that takes the quantum algorithm, prepares the shoebox, and executes the shoebox on the quantum computer. So the control software is classical, it's not quantum, and performs all the steps that I presented in the analogy with learning. It compiles, it prepares the shoebox, which means it explains the algorithm to the quantum computer, it optimizes the shoebox, uses less concepts, less time. Actually, it minimizes the volume of the shoebox, and then it verifies. You can see this as the analogy of the exam. Have you learned everything correct? Is everything in the shoebox correct? So is the algorithm represented correct for the quantum computer? This is a preparation step. And then the shoebox is sent to the quantum computer. And I said that this is the quantum computer on your left, but if you look behind, you will see a classical computer. So behind every great quantum computer, there is a great classic computer used to control the quantum computer. So you take the box and send it to the classic computer, which controls the quantum computer. Now, actually, the quantum computer is not the big thing there. It's only at the tip of it a small quantum chip. And everything, all the wires, are used to control the quantum chip, which is placed in a big refrigerator close to absolute zero. So this means that your box is actually abstracting a time axis, the green axis, and the chip. Therefore, the shoebox is actually a sequence of instructions sent to the quantum chip placed in the refrigerator. Uh, if you see here on your left, the qubits, these ones, you can say that at the time instance one, these qubits, uh, 
represented by dots, are operated by a blue operation, afterwards a time instance two by a red operation, and so on. So the box contents, it's actually translated to qubit instructions sent in discrete time steps to the quantum chip. The problem is more serious because now you have the algorithm translated into a shoebox. You send a shoebox to the classical computer and you need a control software for reliable quantum computers, which are error-corrected computers. But nowadays, you have NISC machines. Near-term uh, near uh, intermediate scale quantum. These have limited hardware resources, about 100 qubits, more or less. Uh, and their biggest technical issue is that the qubits are faulty. And the operations, which are called the gates, are also faulty. So this means you need quantum error correction. Otherwise, errors will accumulate and your computer is just a big random result generator. There are NISC open problems, for example, how do you take a small algorithm which, can, which shouldn't be error-corrected, which can be executed in an un-error-corrected fashion and executed on this limited amount of resources. And within the project, I published a bit about it, where I put some uh, results on the archive. But not this is the main idea. The idea is that nowadays you have a few qubits. And in the future, error correction requires a lot of qubits. How many, you don't know because it depends on the algorithm, it depends on the error rate, accepted error rate which you want to use, you can tolerate for your computation. So more or less, the control software cannot work because you don't have the hardware. But you can have a resource estimator because you can now prepare the algorithm in a shoebox, decompose the entire shoebox to instructions, and then you can find out how much time do I need to execute an algorithm? How many qubits would I need to execute a certain algorithm? Where do I need to optimize the algorithms? How do I need to optimize the error correction? Where do I need to optimize the compilation, the optimization, and things like this? Design automation. So the state of the art control software is actually a resource estimator. You can imagine, I'm coming back to the analogy, you can imagine the, the problem of taking the stack of books, preparing the shoebox. And in more technical terms, the real problem is that all the quantum computations are decomposed in a gate set called Clifford plus T. And you will hear more maybe in the future about it. The T gates are the gates that give the quantum computer its computational power. The Clifford part can be simulated efficiently on a classical computer. It's not something great. Now, the less T gates you use, the more optimal your quantum computation is. So this means when you are preparing the shoe boxes, you have to arrange the T gates such that you use smaller boxes. Now, if you imagine those green cuboids being the T gates in a fault-tolerant regime, you need to arrange them such that they are connected to the Clifford part and everything can be executed as fast as possible using as few as possible qubits. So, I have written the software for it. It's actually online, it can be operated in a web interface, it's scalable, it can take large algorithms and so on, it's open sourced. And we used it together with uh, colleagues at Google to estimate quantum chemistry, how many qubits you would need. And the results are published recently in PRX. The conclusion is that you need about one million superconducting qubits. You can put that into perspective with NISC machines, 100 qubits. So we are not there yet. Um, the, the resource estimator can also do automatic estimations. So this means, how do you arrange those green boxes? How do you distribute them in time? And here you see some results, depending on their frequency and their arrangement. I will not go into the details. The results were published last year at a conference in Greece. So actually, the project is more advanced. That it will finish this year. I want to show you that. Within the project, I looked at also other aspects, like how do you make sure that compilation and optimization are correct? This is the exam analogy. 
how do you use the underlying hardware if it does not have the necessary structure used for error correction? How do you use less hardware resources by recycling? And so on. So this is a list of publications within the project. And future work is actually extending the resource estimator to use more advanced error correcting techniques because now it uses braiding where the hardware is used to generate structures uh, like the red and uh, blue bars which are braided so it's using braiding for computation and it was shown that lattice surgery which is on the right here could be maybe more resource efficient anyway hoping that my future projects will be funded and that I will be given the chance to talk here. I look forward to showing you the results in the future talk. Thank you.